a large model showman's engine, part 57, making a mounting base for the steam pump and bolting it to the footstep bracket. After the last episode, I've decided how I'm going to make it. And the job starts by making a felt-tip pen line on a piece of brass at the 3-inch mark. Why 3 inches? Well, that's the size of the footstep I'm going to mount the pump to. The original mounting base was just a bit too long and a bit too tall. The mounting base is held to the pump by two long bolts. My idea is to make this mounting base so that the four heads of the existing bolts sit on the mounting base. But it will need some kind of secondary support. Please continue to watch the video. I've marked a line in the centre of the piece of brass. Now I need to drill holes to mount it onto the footstep and some holes to mount the pump onto the mounting base. I do need to mill out the centre of this piece of brass. I need to know how wide to make the gap so that the cylinder cover sits in the gap. From an early age, I've always had a problem with mathematics. I'm OK with words, but not too good with numbers. Now approaching my 70th year on the planet, I really am thinking that my brain is wired slightly different to a lot of the people that I know. For instance, how to find half of 1 and 5 eighths. I've displayed the logic of this on screen using some text, but my brain looks at things differently. To arrive at what is half of an inch and 5 eighths, first of all, I half 5 eighths, which is 5 sixteenths. Half of 1 inch is obviously half an inch, so the answer is simple. Half of 1 and 5 eighths of an inch is half an inch and 5 sixteenths. I'd better mention at this stage that I don't need to put felt tip pen marks on the ruler, that's just for the video. Simple and puerile, I'm aware of that, but it's the way my brain works. And now I know what the dimensions are, I can scribe lines at that point on the piece of brass. For the next step, I'm using the original mounting base as a template, and I put two spots in the right place using my felt tip pen deep hole marker. It's over to the drilling machine now to drill all the holes. The two outer holes are the ones that are going to be used to bolt the new mounting base to the footstep. And the positions of these holes were arrived at by measuring the footstep because I don't want the drilled holes to damage the grid lines on the footstep. I try and make these videos always with beginners in mind. But you can't be a beginner forever so here I'm showing a different way of drilling holes in a piece of metal. Normally I would use a centre drill because from a beginner's point of view that's the best way to get the holes in the right place. From years of experience I can do it by eye. I just gently tap the drill on the work and that creates the centre and then I can drill all the way through. I frequently watch a couple of programmes on TV. One of them is called The Repair Shop and the other one is called Salvage Hunters the Restorers. Both of these programmes are worth watching, they have really good teams of craftsmen working on them. Now it's time to mill a slot across the piece of brass. And for this I'm using a 7 16 slot drill. It's like an end mill but it only has two cutting surfaces. This is actually a new one so it's making short work of this piece of brass. I usually buy my machine tooling from a company called RDG Tools and this particular set of milling cutters, which wasn't very expensive, is really good. This job took a while and always remember to try and cut towards the part that you're cutting. This is less important when you're cutting a piece of brass, particularly crossways in the machine vise, because there's very little chance of it locking up and breaking the tool. This piece of footage, by the way, is running at twice normal speed. That way you don't have to sit for too long watching a milling cutter going across a piece of brass. Once I cut the piece of brass to the correct length, then I went back and did each side right up to the line. That's it for the milling in this episode, now it's back over to the bench. At this stage some viewers may be wondering why I bothered doing all that milling. And the answer to that is I want it to look like something other than a slab of brass as a base. And because the footstep is not that strong, any weight reduction is a good thing. I deeply countersunk the two holes underneath, and here I'm fitting a couple of countersunk 2BA bolts. And yes, I am aware that my screwdriver is far too small, 
but the correct size one is down in the house and I'm up in the workshop. This system is no good on its own though because the two bolts can tilt the pump on its base. More about this very shortly. Using the right angled point of my scriber and marking through the base onto the footstep to drill a couple of holes. And the good news is my calculations are quite good because both of the drilled holes do not get in the way of the ribbing on the footstep. This means that if ever I wanted to remove this pump, I could unbolt it from the footstep, then simply fill the holes and paint them. Here's a shot from underneath, and as you can see, both of the bolts are in the correct position, relative to the outer edges of the footstep. To finish the job, I need to do some turning, and because the piece of brass is quite large, I'm using my Smart and Brown lathe to turn it. Although the centre height of this lathe is only 6 inches, it's the most substantial lathe that I've ever had. It's built like a tank and it's very accurate. The first thing to do is to face across the front, followed by just taking one cut down the side. You have to be careful when working with lathes generally, always treat them with plenty of respect, especially ones that are this big. When using a lathe, I recommend never wearing loose clothing or rings. I'll show you how powerful this machine is. This is what's left of my parting tool holder. This parting tool is too deep and to get it at centre height I had to drop it too far down. And one day I was parting something off and it locked up and this is what happened. Note to self, get onto our DG tools and buy another one of these holders. All is not lost though, I can't part off the disc that I want. I use my bandsaw instead. I put the roughly sawn disc back in the chuck and face the front, and looking at it, it needs some more taking off. The thickness of this disc needs to be the same as the thickness of the heads of the bolts. But it will be okay for now, a quick dummy run of the mounting and everything looks fine. I think this looks okay, it's not just a slab of brass, you can see that it's a little bit different, and I could make it fancier, but I probably won't. And that's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.